Hi, this is Brian Gracely, and this is the sort of part two of our software-defined networking talk. Uh, the first part was really kind of about, at, at least at a high level, the overlying, overlying, underlying technologies that are driving this discussion around software-defined networking, um, you know, the protocols, the terminologies, sort of the architectures. And this part, we're really going to look at the business drivers. And the reason it's important to look at the business drivers for such a broad thing like software-defined networking is networking touches everything. It touches every device, every user, all of our applications. It's hard to imagine anymore not being uber-connected 24 by 7 all the time around the world. And so if we're going to talk about anything that involves changing the network, whether it's the architecture or how it operates, you better have a pretty good business reason for why that happens. So in the technology uh, video, we sort of talked about three paths, if you will, or three sort of segments of, of software-defined networking. The first was sort of this software-based networking that we have within servers, or sort of server switching, if you will. Uh, we talked about overlay networks, sort of server-centric overlay networks for new uh, data paths, new data flows, as well as mobility. And then we talked about a, a sort of a more uh, evolving, disruptive way of looking at sort of controller-centric, very, very defined separation between control plane and, and data plane. So let's put that into business terms. Why would we care about any of these things? And more importantly, why do I need to pay attention to software-defined networking? Because you know, is it going to impact how IIT works, which is a cost center, or is it going to impact how I can potentially drive my business? So let's start at the beginning. Let's start with server switching. Um, obviously, we're all sort of aware uh, of how you know, servers have evolved from lots and lots of servers, highly underutilized, racks and racks of them, to you know, leveraging hypervisor virtualization technology. So moving all of these, you know, single box, single box pizza racks, single application, highly underutilized servers uh, to become virtual machines, run them on slightly bigger servers, uh, and drive the, ultimately drive the utilization way up for power, cooling, space, as well as, in some cases, being able to leverage new processors and so forth, but also being able to drive the overall cost of, of operating all these servers, being able to spin them up and, and manage them in racks down. So uh, that's been going on. It's really become the de facto way since about 2009 for how applications get deployed. And what tends to happen is when one part of the sort of IT ecosystem changes, it starts looking at, OK, can other things change as well and take advantage of, of those changes um, for the betterment of the business or the betterment of, of the technology? And what we're ultimately seeing is people are saying, well, if I can uh, become efficient with virtualization, right, and I, I, there's some ways to move things around from, say, this big server to, to this big server within a rack, um, and I can do that to make my applications more highly available, to better utilize my resources, can I start to do that on a bigger geographic uh, manner? So can I move this to another data center? Can I move this to another city? Can I move this to you know, another country? And you, know, you may want to do this for availability reasons. You may want to do it for disaster recovery reasons or business continuity reasons. Or you may want to do it for reasons that you want to be able to bring your application, bring your data closer to your end users for performance, for experience, for whatever that reason is. So that idea of sort of um, once my applications, my servers become uh, fungible software, if you will, and they become mobile, uh, you start thinking, well, why does the mobility have to be confined to a single rack? And the challenge with that is, and this is where overlay networks come into play, is your underlying infrastructure wasn't designed for that level of mobility. And so that business driver to be able to want to move my applications for whatever the reason to different data centers, cities, countries, whatever, is going to start making us look at, well, I've got to think about the network differently. Do I have to think about sort of being able to build these overlays so that I can have mobility between multiple racks, multiple data centers, multiple cities, whatever that might be. And that tends to be the business driver why people are looking at you know, overlay type of software-defined networking topologies. Okay? The third thing is, so we sort of talked about server switching. We talked about the overlay reason, being able to have mobility for a bunch of business reasons, application reasons. The third one, controller-based, is going to take a little bit more time to explain. So let me, let me sort of work this out. What we see in some cases is, and a lot of this is very, very much being driven by application teams. So if we've got application teams and development teams that are saying, hey, I'm not building applications that are sort of the old way of doing very monolithic, takes 18 to 24 months to roll things out. But instead, I'm building applications 
that are constantly being changed, that are constantly being deployed, uh, constantly making updates to them. So you run big web hosting sites, you run any sort of online uh, environment, you do gaming, you're, you're doing you know, kind of uh, constantly changing environments. Let's say you're running a huge business analytics environment, quote unquote big data, and you're constantly adding more resources because it's a certain time of the month. You're adding more resources because you have a new input that you want to uh, include in your analysis. Um, it ends up being very, very application driven. So if your applications, the need for the applications to change quite a bit are, are happening quickly and that's impacting your underlying network. You've got to add resources, you want to move uh, where the data is closer to certain pieces in a topology. That's where we're starting to see people say, hey, um, I'd like to potentially have, instead of lots and lots of places in the network where I have to think about policy, think about topology, think about bandwidth, I'd like to have a more centralized place of doing that. You know, more controller-based, centralized place where my quote-unquote control plane is centralized. It can be more tightly coupled with my applications, not just providing infrastructure for connectivity or bandwidth, and um, centralizing what I'm doing um, and having the ability to have this really be become more sort of developer friendly. It's API friendly, it's application friendly, it's application aware. And I separate that from kind of the underlying data plane, if you will, you know, the underlying switches, routers, firewalls, load balancers, and so on and so forth, and think about them as something that I can programmatically change. And something that I can say, hey, the application needs more bandwidth. The application needs to move, you know, data from here closer to here, I need to change the topology for whatever reason. Instead of having to think, touch this box, touch this box, touch this box, you know, go to all these different points of control, I can do it centrally in one place, be able to push these changes out, be able to do them in a programmatic way that's tied much closer to the application. And this is where we start to see people say, hey, this is kind of a greenfield opportunity. It's a new way of thinking about this. It might be a brand new data center. It might be a brand new set of applications. It really might be a brand new business model. And they're starting to say, maybe this makes more sense. Really distinctly separating the control plane, tying the control plane much closer to the application team, or in some cases, the DevOps team. Uh, we'll talk about DevOps in a separate video. And then having sort of a separate data plane that you know, can be more uh, programmatically application API controlled, less points of control, or less points of configuration, less points of management. Um, and so you know, that tends to be the business driver, why people are looking at these sort of controller-based, very distinct separation of control plane and data plane. So hopefully this video was sort of helpful to help you understand you know, how are people moving, uh, tying these sort of distinct technology architectures that are software-defined networking or as part of software-defined networking to kind of their business drivers for each one of them. And as we can see, some of them are just purely cost savings and availability savings or, or efficiency. Some of them are you know, trying to, to move more between the IT problem to solve and the business problem to solve. And a lot of them are, you know, some of these are, are starting to become very, very business centric and application centric and what's driving them. So hopefully that helps you uh, understand both the technology behind quote unquote software defined networking and the business drivers why businesses and some of the technology vendors are trying to bring these, these solutions to market. Thank you and thanks for watching.